Hi, I'm here today to talk about uh, the stupid thing that Donald Trump said the other day concerning Section 230 and the defense budget, um, and in particular 230 and what it is, because there's been a lot of controversy on what it is and how it should operate. Uh, it's a piece of internet legislation in the United States passed into law as part of the Com uh, Communications Act of 1996. It's a common name for the Title V, the Tele Telecommunications Act of 96. Uh, this basically, it protects uh, Facebook, Twitter, and all these other guys from getting in trouble uh, for what I'm doing right now. It's not their fault if I say something stupid or inappropriate. It's my fault. Uh, and we'll just go into a little bit of what the law itself says and uh, interpret it as best we can, or I can anyway, as some goober with a computer. Uh, the findings for the protection for private blocking and screening of offensive material. The Congress finds the following. The rapidly developing array of internet and other interactive computer services available to individual Americans represent an extraordinary advance in the availability of educational and informational resources to our citizens. These services are, offer users a great degree of control over the information that they receive. This is a key part here. This is actually the the center of what the entire controversy is. These servers, these services, offer users a great degree of control over the information that they receive, as well as the potential for even greater control in the future as technologies develops. The internet and other interactive computer services offer a forum for true diversity of political discourse, unique opportunities for cultural development and myriad avenues for intellectual activity. The internet and other interactive computer services have flourished to benefit all of the Americans with a minimum of government regulation. Increasingly, Americans are relying on interactive media for a variety of political, educational, cultural, and entertainment services. All right, we're moving into policy from the findings. It is the policy of the United States to promote the continued development of the internet and other interactive computer services and other interactive media to preserve the vibrant and competitive free market that presently exists for the internet and other interactive computer services unfettered by federal or state regulation to encourage the development of technologies which maximize user controls over what information received by individuals families and schools who use the internet and other interactive computer services to this is a big piece here too this next one that's part of the controversy that everyone's arguing back and forth on. To remove disincentives for the development and utilization of blogging and filtering technologies that empower parents to restrict their children's access to objectionable, objectionable or inappropriate online material and to ensure vigorous enforcement of federal criminal laws to deter and punish trafficking in obscenity, stalking, and harassment by means of computer. Uh, and the next piece goes into some of the protections for the Good Samaritan protections. Uh, treatment of publisher or speaker. No provider of an, you, or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. Civil liability from there. No provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be held liable or accountable or on account of any action voluntary taken in good faith to restrict access to or availability of that the provider or user considers to be obscene, lewd, lascivious, filthy, extensively, excuse me, excessively violent, harassing, or otherwise objectionable, whether or not such material is constitutionally protected. Now, right there, I think is what it all comes down to. It's tough to get around that one or any action taken to enable or make available to information content providers or other use stop that one again any action taken to enable or make available to information content providers or others the technical means to restrict access to material described in the above paragraph uh, now it does say in the next part that uh, when you start a service like this, you basically have to give people a way to control what they're going to be receiving and that they know how and you have to let them know how. It's all in your terms of service that you clicked without ever reading. Uh, but that piece I just said about the any action voluntary taken in good faith, uh, it's impossible to tell what is good faith. 
Uh, it's impossible to tell what's obscene, lewd, lascivious, filthy, excessively violent, or otherwise objectionable. Now, harassing we actually have a definition for, but all the rest are opinion. You know, to what degree does it become filthy? At what point is it lewd? I mean, what is obscene? Pornography is acceptable in this country, and that's considered obscene. And there's a famous uh, quote from a Supreme Court justice. You know, I can't define pornography, but I can, I can sure uh, identify it when I see it. Now, this makes it sound like there's no way to, these guys can take down whatever they want, and they are not responsible for it, and they're not responsible for what you put up either. Uh, and these protections go even to protect uh, terrorist organizations. And I can give you an example here. Uh, first, first, Force versus Facebook uh, from, I think it says 2019, wow. Yeah, and basically they, uh, I got a site here, a source from Law360, and basically they were protected by the Second Circuit Court with their uh, immunity because they were uh, given Hamas a platform. You know, terrorist organizations are protected, well, they're not necessarily protected, but Facebook is protected from them. And that would be Twitter and everyone else, too. Now, what a lot of people have been saying about this is that they're, is that once you start censoring and changing what's been put out there, you're no longer a soapbox, but you're now a publisher. It says, it seems pretty clear in here that as long as they're in good faith, or they consider it obscene or offensive, that's all that they need to do this. Which is why... Republican Senator Hawley, uh, last year in June, wanted to end the support for internet uh, censorship, censorship, and that would remove the Section 230 protections from companies whose services have been more than th have more than 30 million active monthly users in the U.S. and more than 300 million worldwide, or have over 500 million annual global revenue, until they get a certification from the F FTC saying that they're in good faith. Uh, I personally don't like the idea of the federal government having to get involved with the FTC because that just sounds like another way for the government to be in control of something that they should have no say in. Um, there's been criticism and support for this bill. Uh, the the Republicans actually were 53% in favor with a 24% opposition. And the Democrats were 46% in favor with a 20% opposition. So this is across the board supported by both parties. Um, and Nancy Pelosi herself is on board. Let's see if I can find her exact name in here somewhere. Oh, well. It, it, it kind of... I don't like the idea of the government getting more involved in anything. Uh, as I've said before, I don't trust the government to fill a pothole, let alone decide what's acceptable to say or if people should live and die. Uh, I will say, though, I did like the... Uh, executive action that Trump took somewhat recently concerning censorship and basically saying you can't be partisan on it, you can't pick political side and take stuff down, you can't just say, I don't like what they're saying. We need something besides just putting a flag up, like you see on Facebook saying, Corona was mentioned in this. Listen to what we have to say instead. Or the election stuff. This is supposed to be free and open debate, and when they go and put a flag on this stuff, it's no longer free and open. It's them saying, these guys are wrong, and they're not giving me a chance to rebut their argument or even see their argument. Because I cite my sources, and I bring information, and they just say, no. Uh, we can go into why it's bad to, cut, to threaten the defense budget over this, but, I mean, that's obvious why that's a stupid and terrible threat. Uh, I think Trump really crossed the line on this one. I think he's incredibly wrong. And, um... You know, we need to amend 230, not not repeal it. Anyway, let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. If uh, you think I made a couple of good points, share this out for other people to see. Thank you and good luck.